Hey, thanks for tuning in to the stream <clears throat> and the video. Um, I'm going to be doing some work playing catch up on a rule that was added to PHP stand Drupal uh, last week on the stream. We added a render callback rule. And what that tries to do is inspect the render callbacks passed to, um, what do you want to call it? What's it called? Render arrays. And this determine if they're valid or not and now my inspection's broken or it can't auto load php stand for some reason um but one thing that was missed is the fact that drupal core allows you to reference a service and then a class and it knows how to separate it out that's not handled and then somebody else found an interesting bug where um using a static class it returns the type of non-empty string, and that's a um, PHP stand type that I didn't handle. So we're going to work on those today. But first, I'm going to see if I can get PHP storm to index that far correctly. see why it's not indexing that's why it's saying it can't find the error rules because it's not unpacking the far provided by php stand i had this happen before too and i can't remember how i fixed it where for some reason it didn't index this appropriately but for now what i'm going to do is look at drupal core and try to remember where that logic lies because we want to extract that logic into our service map class service map class i believe so we call um resolve get services wait set service oh get service so we have get service but we need to be able to i want to have a helper method because this is used a lot inside drupal to try to find the service based off this um Service name, colon, render toolbar links. Or service name, colon, method name. And I can't exactly remember where it is in core, but it should be underneath dependency injection. No. Er, let's see. Container. Maybe it could be in component two. Let's see. It's dumper, container. No. Um, let's look at it this way. Let's do, let's search for where. Um, it's used most often in Lazy Builder. So let's look at that. Let's look at the placeholder generator. Um, so Lazy Builders are used to put a placeholder and do rendering at the last possible moment in Drupal. So if we look here, you can see that it's lazy builder true, creates the placeholder markup, and this gets rendered at the end of the cycle. Placeholder render array, that's the token. Um, let's do placeholder and render cache. Um, placeholder, change placeholder, single flush strategy. Here we go. Nope. Um, big pipe. So somewhere in here, this gets rendered and I just want to see that creates the placeholder. That's the placeholder. Where's the renderer? No. Lazy builder true. Let's see if I can render. Ah, here we go. If is set lazy builder. So let's figure out how it finds the callback supported keys can create a placeholder it created a placeholder method lazy builder <clears throat> do callback so here we go um is string so double colon if it has double colon if double colon is equal to false the controller resolver. Here we go. Um, if the colon is false, 
turn this create controller. So here's all the logic in it. Okay, if count is equal to one on the count of the colon, it explodes it there. So let's copy this out. Um, core code for this concept is right there. All right, so we need to um, replicate this code right here. And we want it to be in some kind of reusable fashion. So if we did get service, um, what is a good name for this? Create controller, string, controller, string, controller, interface, resolver, interface, base controller. Mm. Let's see, it's just weird that's called a controller, but Maybe it shouldn't go into here. What we'll do is, um, do we have helpers? Internal, namespace check. Let's do controller, resolver. So what does this do if there's two semicolons? Class or service, which is really not needed because if it's that the two, if it has the two colons, PHP stand can parse that. So we don't need to do this code here. It's just the single um, service method notation. And I feel like we're gonna need it again, but I don't know where. Um, so clear index. So I guess maybe internal, let's do um, service. I don't want to, oh man. This needs a good name. That's the hard part. Um, So not namespace check. It's just why service method notation. Get the service because once we get the service, we need to get the class name and we need to find the class name for the service to be able to do the proper callback. So if it's a constant string type, let's see, right? That should be the error. Um, you know, it's a service. So this constant string type, it's not callable. So it's failing here. So type is from, type is scope get type. <clears throat> and as far as I know, there's no way for us to really influence the types returned. Because that would be one thing to do is like, have constant string, have it be like a constant string type that represents the, um, that converts it to and is callable appropriately with the class name. Um, let's see. Well, the first step would be to make sure it works. So I'm gonna let this finish indexing, make sure it works, and then go through. So if it's not callable, we need to check. And I think somewhere in here I recreate the type. Um, yeah, class type, class reflection, get name. So we'll try that too. We'll need to inject the service map, which I can copy from. Load include base. And the callback rule. This can just be extension map. And the constructs. I 
think I do need to restart PHP Storm real quick, so that way I can get um, so I can get the uh, what do you want to call it? The indexing back appropriately. So one second here. Or I guess I should have just done it through the toolbar. PHP stand Drupal. And hopefully that fixes the indexing because otherwise I'll be hosed. Um, yeah, so we need the index map and I need to see if I need to update the DI at all. The dependency injection rather. Let's delete this. These files. Um, so extension neon. We're under callback rule. Nope, it's automatically dependency injected. Great. Um, please index this far. All right, so we've got the extension map and what we need to go through to do is, is callable has function type get value. I wonder, uh, man. Yeah, we need to like transform. Oh, good, it's picking up the far, so I can try to um, handle this. Meantime, let's do php stand.dev. Let's read the docs to see if I can, in fact, influence the types that get returned. So, write in developer extensions, type system, and type, retrieve the AST, get type. Show table of type implementations. Uh, run empty string, string type. That's for one of the issues. Um, querying a specific type. Asking for best way, let's say, um, type normalization. So I don't think there's a way for us to really hook into that, but let's just look at the code and we're in the mutating scope. So key this get T key this resolve type. Um, there's no way to tap into this. Let's get promotive native types. Class name. No, there is definitely very little chance. Um, method call, static call. Let's create first class callable. <clears throat> Holy cow. All right. So that's not going to work. But one thing that we can do is... So we're checking if constant string type. It's almost like we need to check it twice. And I don't like having to do that. Um, trusty callback. Yep, working on the render array stuff. So the problem is there's, there's a bug. There's two bugs that have been reported. Um, Drupal allows you to do callbacks that are a service name and then a method on the service name, and that's not broken down at all. And also when the um, class name is referenced via a constant or some other form, we get non-empty string as the uh, type returned, and that's not handled at all. So we're gonna try to split that apart. Um, the problem is that if it's not callable, that's when we need to split it apart and then end up having to run it again for this constant array type um, so I wonder if is this duplicated here I think that was one concern of mine is duplicating the whole trusted callback 
So maybe I need to abstract this to a method. So let's do private function get type. So let's just start experimenting with it there. Yeah, it's it's rough and it's gonna get even more <laughs> rough as we go, I believe. So it'll be fun. Um, so let's take the scope. Because this logic, I didn't like this logic. It's all over the place right now. And this is showing that it needs to be encapsulated somehow. So my idea, let's copy this. So this should be this, get type node and scope and my computer is running very very sluggish um i just realized i don't even know if you guys can even see the screen that well with this new monitor so i'm gonna bump up the editor and fonts in the editor to 16. how about 15. i just realized that with the new monitors it made Gave me a lot more screen real estate, but I have no idea if it made the IDE even readable or not. Um, so let's do return. Node value. So this is going to be the start of it. Um, so node. Or wait, where did I copy this from? node item if not array item value so this should be thank you sorry about that um it did not occur to me at all that the screen size was coming in that small and you know what i might even just bump it up it's a little weird for me but it's gonna make it a lot easier in the stream um there we go so all right so we got we're gonna Basically, instead of calling just a scope get type, we're going to start abstracting some logic to split it apart because we have um, like is not callable. It checks if it's the function because then we need to split it out into the um, class because the type doesn't give us the class. It just checks is callable, but nothing else. So we're going to try to simplify a lot of this logic into readjusting the type. <clears throat> so let's go first let's do some test driven development so we're going to do rules render pre-render callback rule this is technically an old is wrong um i added the service definition into here which we do need so let's um let's see load include Get by type. Um, there we go. From somewhere we had to have had it. All right, so we're gonna satisfy this rule and we're gonna run it and it's gonna pass. I hope, unless something's really broken. And, oh, wait, extension map. Oh, shoot, I put the wrong. We need the service map here. I copied the wrong code. Yeah, happy if it passes, happy if it fails, but something's... Actually, no, I wouldn't be happy if this fails because all I did was change one line. Um, like, that is not... Um, oh, so maybe... <clears throat> excuse me. I wonder if the output 
from PHP stand got improved. Um, I didn't change anything. All I did was add do that one adjustment and the ah ha ha. Um, tests. Let's see about these tests. No. Build integration. What is going on here? Scheduled 20 hours ago, 17 hours ago. Um, second, let me see if I can, I can not kick a job off. Let's fix these tests a bit. Wait, it didn't even, it lost the tip. What happened? Oh, that's why, because it changed it to node values. Item value, well, that would be a really big reason. <clears throat> of course, when you, uh, you know, you give it the wrong variable, it's gonna break. So there we go, we're passing. So let's do this here. So if type instance of, so let's do type return type, if constant string of type blah and what was that class I put it in here for a reason controller resolver now I'm pretty sure is class string will always be um, false in this case so we'll say well, we can do if type and then but if type is class string return type so it could be a controller that it could be a class that just has an invoke method on it and that's why it's there um so we want to check that it has function so we want to then check if this so if type controller is actually type get value if the substring count is equal to one type get value and we need to do a um, bum 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 constant array type so then we do return new constant array type I feel like I could I thought I constructed one in here somewhere before but maybe not um, shoot I know I looked at this but I didn't actually implement it did I new constant array type project nope let's copy the reference and go it's not hard to do but i don't remember it offhand i looked at it last week source new constant integer type I think it's just that constant integer type yep this is the example I copied so and then so saying that's the first key then integer type integer type that's not exactly it it would be <clears throat> I need to go find more examples. Um, constant integer type, string type, from interval. That's looking somewhat better, but that's the value types. How does it get? Get callable parameters, find method name and type. If key types is not equal to two, if key types is not a 
that value types value types class or object if class or object constant string type and method is not instant okay so that's what we need to do new i shouldn't have closed that so fast find find type and method name is so value types constant string type for both class or service and we know it's a class string and then new constant string type method so actually i should have done this last but oh well i didn't and i say that i should have done it last because i'm testing new functionality ahead of time before i'm making sure that existing stuff works so that covers create controller and i'm returning it so simplify so the next step to cover is this matches for the double um, colons because if that is found um, it matches one zero one and two right um I believe so Yeah, so we'll do if matches is equal to null. It shouldn't happen, but we'll just return the type. Actually, if matches is not equal to null, um, we'll do the same process here. So we're recreating the type, which would be matches one and matches two. I'm gonna put a breakpoint here because we'll test this out. Um, it does, but I don't use is null checks. I just always do checks against the null keyword, constant rather. Um, I never use the is null method. So I never do is null. Um, I just always use this. Just out of habit. Um, okay, so really, we should be able to then run the test and have no failures. I just need to make sure our method type, this had a failure, Oops. it must be of type string, null given, a line Oh, okay. Um, so let's do a debug. Of that. Oh, play step over. So, oh, matches was zero. So that's, that's right. So type value. Um, so if it's not equal to null, that's right. The logic here is a little bit different. Um, so this match, I think we need to have if, let's see. Let's actually look at the code. Um, so we copy it from constant string type is callable. So let's go constant string type. If it's not null, because it would never get to this point. That's right. It would never get here otherwise. So we need to say if matches is not equal to null and count matches greater than zero. Ideally, it should be an equal match is what I want to move it to. So let's do, let's just run the test, rerun the fails. 
And we should be back to green. All right. So now we should be able to do this checks if it's a function and we should be able to delete these lines because now we're going to be transformed and have a constant array type. And I have to worry about handling different transformations of the object type. Um, that only ran part of the rule. Let's rerun the entire rule. Okay, so that passed. That's good. It cleaned up this whole like constant string type. Um, so if it's not callable, we return an error. If it's a function, we add extra work. We add extra logic in here to make sure if it's a function to say that hey, it cannot run um, because we have no way of knowing if it is a. class if it's a constant string type that references a class or not only that if it's callable we don't know the type of callable it is right we go to constant string type is callable just returns yes or no and we have no idea the outcome of has function or not um, this has class has method just creates yes and in here there's no real way to know what kind of callable we have so there we go. Now constant array type. So if it's not callable, return an error, find the type and method, and make sure that the class extends trusted callback interface. Great. Now, the hard part is knowing um, if the method is in the trusted callbacks. That's a whole other problem to figure out um yeah that would be a whole other issue um so constant string type actually it shouldn't even care if it's callable or not because functions aren't allowed um if i remember correctly Recent security releases. If you have code that adds a render callback, it might need to be updated. If the callback is to a procedural function, you'll need to move it to an object that implements trusted callback interface. In core, all these things have been re replaced with. Um, so I guess let's see even, we don't even care if it's callable. Well, wait, we do. Sorry, we do care if it's callable because we don't know if it's a function or a class. So never mind. Um, constant array type, closure, and then we add some helpers for the uh, forms because closures cannot be serialized in forms. So I guess we just need to um, add in the test fixture for the service method. So let's go to the this callback rule. I'm just going to add it in at the end and I'm going to take it verbatim. which would be just this line here and run the test. And then I'm gonna have to, I didn't write the negative test first, which showed it fail with that present. So I need to replicate that. Oh, never mind. It just doesn't. Oh, duh, of course it doesn't work yet. Um, it doesn't work because in my code, what did I do? I just returned the constant string type of the class name. So let's go ahead and fix that. So service definition equals this service map. 
Get service. Do we have get service? Best name or service. If service definition, right? Looks like it'd be better null. So if service definition, let's cut this out. And it would be service definition get class. So if we run the test, we should pass now. Great, it does. So how about I make a new um, branch, get new branch, GitHub 296. Um, PHP vendor bin, PHP stand. Let's do the pre-flight checks first because I have a bad habit of committing and then failing my CI right away. Yep. Line 145. Um, only booleans. Yeah, so that's... Let's do a strict null check. And 149. <clears throat> so, okay, we, we have a. Could be null. Could it really be null? Why did this be made nullable? Because can a service really not have a class definition? Yes, that's right, if it's a factory. Um, so service definition. All right, I'm gonna move this around a little bit because we're gonna have too much nesting. So we'll say if service definition is equal to null, return type. If so if the service definition is null or service definition get class is equal to null, the return, that's going to make PHP stand happy. And last but not least, PHP CS with the source directory. No errors. Get commit AV. Handle controller. Notation for callbacks fixes 296. So push U origin GitHub 296. And GitHub PR create. Let's create the pull request for it. Yep, it's going to have the body text. All right, so now if this passes, then we can work on this one, and this one will be interesting. Um, the main problem we have here is I didn't know what types we would have happen, so it just that's it's falling in this else, and I might add a tip that says um, to create a new issue if you encounter this, because thankfully they did, um, but it's not explicit that they need to. Um, let's see. Oh, this is yeah, an element. Oh, why did Circle CI build fail? Rerun. Why wouldn't it let me rerun it? Uh, rerun from failed. Let me why won't it why did this even happen? Oh, I'm not logged in. That's
One second. Um, let me take this off screen real quick, just in case something pops up that shouldn't. Um, all right, should be back in action. Oh, I lost my page. So build and rerun from failed. Cause that just seems like a quirky error and um, to get back to the pull request branch pull request. trigger pipeline get me back to the project we'll just go to pull request that way okay so this is the last thing that needs to finish <clears throat> this is everything else is passing and circles yeah is the memory from mutating scope um oh that's new i don't even know if i need to keep my circle ci jobs i have them because that's what i started out with because i like circle ci the most um but i feel like maybe i should just get rid of it so test upgrade says a drupal project a drupal build php stand analyze um Circle CI, PHP memory limit. That's going to be old. Um, that I don't even know if that's the old, old school. Come on. No. Um, Let's look at the Laravel on GitHub. Years ago, config. No. Come on. Let's just see. PHP vendor bin. We do. Um, so would that be? It'd be. It'd be PHP. D memory limit equals negative one, right? That's that would be the trick. Yeah. So let's change that. Render bin to PHP stand dot var. Get diff. Get commit av memory limit error. CI and then get push. Memory limit issue. All right, hopefully that'll pass. And I can start working on the next issue. We'll pop this open in Circle CI. And um, some cool news. Let me open it up or find the issue on the side. Um, the effort to one Drupal. Um, Okay, I didn't know if I had my security issues blocked open or not. But the issue to start running PHP stand on Drupal core at level zero is now RTBC. It's been reviewed by the community, um, which is really cool. So that means PHP stand Drupal will actually be leveraged by Drupal core for static code analysis via PHP stand, which obviously the big work comes from PHP stand, but um, this library will be actively used by Drupal core, which is pretty exciting. 
And let's see. So what is the next step? Um, so it's got release manager review, good dependency evaluations, add these depths to uh, the evaluation criteria. Oh, I don't want to do that. Um, dev dependencies, PHP unit. So I guess it needs to be added here. Um, Drupal CI already runs PHP stand um, in various ways. So the dev.aquia, what is it, like Drupal 10? Um, so for one, this this dashboard, no. Project status. Drupal CI is running this through everything right now. And you can actually run PHP stand as part of your workflow on Drupal CI. Um, it's just that Drupal core did not because it crashed in a few ways. Um, but it's level zero. We have a lot of, um, this is a long page. Um, we do have a lot of follow-ups to work on. Um, like there's this PHP stand error. We crash PHP stand with our test. The PHP code is fine, but we crash uh, PHP stand. Um, I created the error here and haven't been able to look at it. Um, there is a tag PHP stand zero. And all the issues tagged with PHP stand zero are basically to try to fix the um, the baseline errors as much as we can. Because if we look at this patch, we can hopefully not crash my computer. Uh, the baseline is a lot of things. Um, Yeah, there's like, what? Oh, get definitions on unknown class, some core plugin trait. There's lots of things that need to be done. Um, like, oh, this non-empty string is invalid callback. Like, I'll be fixing that right now. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there's gonna be a lot of stuff. And actually, let's look at this one. So I have a feeling that part of my next few streams, oh, wait. Um, no way. So I have a feeling that my next few streams are just going to be trying to figure out why these things are here. But this just blows my mind. So placeholders are rendered with by executing the associated lazy builder render callback, which generates a render array. And here, oh, shoot, I see. Um, hmm. This is a bug where it's for array. Oh, man. So it's array intercept key, and this is expected to be true. So um, I'm going to open an issue real quick. Render. Oh, man. Render. Callback. Rule causes error in placeholder generator. This is interesting. We're we're having issues in an array intersect key that has that has nothing to do with a render array but our rule is processed um, so that could be an interesting one to work out um, let's merge this request so yeah I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot like Function twig escape filter not found. Like, why is that there? A lot of um, callables not available. Um, pre render callback current time is not callable. Like, that's true. It's not allowed. Um, these test cases, like, they probably just need to be annotated for PHP stand to skip. Um, question How do I handle validation for entity forms when the add form and edit form use the same form? 
would you have different validations if it's that way? This is my question. It's like, what would the different validations be if they use the same form? Because the form uses entity, um, the content entity form handles validations itself. Um, oh, revision data is not shown on ad form. Then just make a different ad form. Uh, we do that in commerce, I think, or we did. You can go to, um, so if you do, I would just create two different forms and um, what's this product? So with entities, you have different form handlers. So like here, we, we defined default add and edit. There's no reason that we needed to have add and edit be separate when there's already default. Um, but I would just define default being the main form and then an add one and hook into the add form a little bit differently. Um, I think that would be the best case. I don't know what kind of validation you would need to do. Um, well, here's another example. Did I already merge that code? I sure did. Well, we can do some callbacks here. So Drupal namespace filter, um, lazy builder value string is invalid. Well, that's not add attachment placeholder array callback string. Oh, so that's just the bad. Um, so this should be callable. Callback should not be a string, it should be callable. And then we'd be okay, possibly. Um, so I will definitely be having a field day with the Drupal core source code. But I'm gonna get back to this main task and we've got one fixed, which was a core problem. Um, now let's get to the that's not it. Ah, non-empty string. So let's get back to the main branch. Get check out main. Cool. Isn't this gonna be a problem for core? Here, let me copy that link. I mean, it's running. Drupal core is running it and not using this. So I have no idea, honestly. So let's get, let's look at the patch. Because I think this PHP stand step has to be explicitly added. Um, let me get up to the top and um, review the patch. I don't know why we went from patches to merge requests back to patches. It's so much easier with the merge request, but something must have gone wrong. Um, yeah, so we're not modifying Drupal CI. It runs because it was crashing. So what about this ad? Writing, unable to write, write. Huh. That's a good question. I don't know how this is working then. If, so core has, it's PHP stand neon. Yeah, how, how and what, how is this working? Um, yeah, if we go, like, even if we were to go, let's scroll down and find a failure. Let's see if, no, let's go here. 
So see here, it's commit code check. Oh, that's why. Um, that's what's going on is the commit code check. It's because Drupal core is different than everything else because it's a, its own snowflake. Um, there's this commit code check script. And I think that's what is running. We have this dev <laughs> core runs this commit code check. Um, oh yeah, um, this file, this will be set to run. I don't agree with this because it only runs spe against specific files instead of the entire thing. Um, yeah, it's doing, it's got its own script. It's not using Drupal CI. I'm against it because it's going to do a partial scan every single run. Um, instead of scan against everything, but I mean, at least it's loading. It's just, it, it's, I don't like this because it's running against itself, which modifies the, the baseline. Um, yeah, so that's okay, the variable set when one of the files to this variable we set to one when the files core baseline or php send neon dot dist are changed. Um, if baseline, otherwise it only runs a partial. And the reason why we have a partial config is on partial it disables reporting unmatched errors yeah i'm not this is gonna bite us in the nose real bad um you can't do partials it's got to scan all of the code at once um alex pot commented on this about it um we should not add partial to this list. I have run the scripts. Um, what would happen? I commented on here somewhere saying that I don't think it's a good idea to run partially. Um, But it's one of at least we can get it running and then see if it blows up magnificently in our face. <clears throat> it's funny, we did find weird crashes due to APC caching inside the uh, Drupal CI environment, though. That was definitely something that came up. Which I think Alex Pot came up with the fix, so props to him. And if I'm wrong, it's an issue as a source of truth of who found it out. Um, all right, let's go fix this. So let's look at our, our test rules. Remind your callback. Let's do this fixture. Um, That's not where. Let's find form with closure, render callback interface object, render array with. Let's go ahead and um, we'll just add it into somewhere in here. Render array with object callback. So we did this. Let's add a new one. Where can we do lazy builder constant with constant? Let's add it. In this case, pre run, it's not a pre render. 
we have. So it would be static. Oh, well, let's do self class pre render callback static class. So the difference would be self is the current class, static would be if this wasn't a final class. Um, it means the parent most, like the children, the ancestor, the whatever you want to call it, whoever extends it. <clears throat> now we need to do um, Oh man, you know what? No. Um, hold on. I feel like lazy builders might have been lazy build I think I need to remove lazy builders from this as a whole because it's not the same callback structure. Lazy builder, what, how, that doesn't, lazy builder callback. Um, let's look at clock view builder. Perfect, this is a great example, static class. Um, yep, lazy builders are just broken. So we got to fix that because it's actually an array where the first value is a callback and then arguments to it. Um, because this is the lazy builder. Um, so yeah, that would be the, this is actually what it would look like. Um, it was, it'd be self class lazy builder lazy builder with that is true um i have a feeling i'm about to move lazy builder handling to a whole other class the rule So that's this one, lazy builder, lazy builder, static class. Um, that's the other, oh shoot, renderer, do callback, where does this do callback? Um, <clears throat> object or class name. The question is, I guess it can be an object. I didn't know if it could be an object or not. like this and then they were doing string concatenation so so this is going to turn into a doozy to close out the that in the next hour um yeah what we need to do is we need to expand this pre-render rule callback and um 
sorry, not that one. Render array with, so let's duplicate this and it should be a static class. Let's remove the final so that way it doesn't warn about All right, we're going to run the test. <clears throat> and based off what they're saying, pre-render callback, one and two is not callable. Pre-render callback, a key one is not callable. What do you mean? Um, Wish this had bigger output, but let's go let's go debug our rule now, and we're gonna test this out. Um, so let's see. Let's do a breakpoint here, and we're gonna debug this test. And hopefully we can solve this but yeah i just broke lazy builders i'm pretty sure from at being analyzed well it didn't analyze in the first place so whatever so type let's look at this type which value types string um that should be the first one right yep this is a constant wait yeah constant array type What failed right away. That's not what I expected. So the rule. Why did this fail? Instantly. Oh, for each items, man. All right, debug. Do with it on line seventy six. So type, constant array type. Um, constant array type and, oh, no. Type is constant array type, value types. That's not right. That's a bug. Um, new constant array type. That's a bug in here. I think no that's not it let's do <clears throat> so the reason why is because it said con constant array type but it didn't have the right values for class or method so let's see item value items i'm just there we go i'm just going to break point there and move this to down here so type is constant array type um Type is constant array type. Okay, it was self. Oh, wait. That's not right. Well, that's weird. Um, what? Hold on. That doesn't make any sense. So node is array items. It has one item left. Right. Did I break something here? I did. Um, I sure did. That's not valid. There we go. That's why. So I just had broken code, so that was right. Right? The errors I saw were right, so I had invalid callbacks, period. Um, 
because I had them wrapped in brackets to be treated as an array. So constant array type, constant string type, there we go. Um, matches is three. Type is callable. Type is intersection type, types of string type and non-empty string type. All right. Um, now we're at this point. Oh, man. Oh, let's, let's do debug equals type value. Um, if type All right, I got to figure this out. So the type is intersection type. So if type instance of intersection type iterable valuable get get constant get iterable type get constant get types Let's replay the test. So intersection type. So compound type, get types, get reference classes, accepts is super of, subtype of equals describe, describe itself. So have types what does this give us string type and non empty string type which gives us no values um let's do for each as inter section type um, if intersection type instance of string type class equals null if intersection type instance of accessory non empty string type No. Stop the test. So this could be a problem. Um, if it can't parse that. So string type describe is offset accessible, has offset value type, accepts to number, to integer, to float, to array, is non empty string, is numeric string. So we have no idea the value here. Accessory not empty string type. Um, well, darn. To array. Um, So this is going to be bad. Well, actually, you know what? No. Um, like, what, people need to... Um, all right. I'm going to just say... A fix is to, is to use a proper callable. That's going to be my take is um, start using callables correctly instead of doing string concatenation. Um, 
so I guess what we should do is accessory non empty string. Intersection type. Um, describe itself. Can access property. Has property. Get property. Can call methods. Has method. Can access. Has constant. Is iterable. So let's try this out. Um, so let's change this to be else if else if type instance of intersection type. And type is non empty string. Um, how do we add a tip? Tip. So we do, let's do um, tip open and issue. with this error so we can quick so I just say open an error with this um, choose it's not choose it should be okay it's just there we go um, there but else if we have here um, value wait s print position wait one two three key checked um, value describe um, at key so let's change this around a little we're going to try to describe this better. Um, flip, so value at key is a concatenated string, and the callback cannot be determined the callback key is type let's say is type and the Callback instead of string concatenation, try using other using other callback formats. Maybe I still what we should be able to do though is see that there's the two colons in here um let's do stop equals null and debug this again because what i would like to do is just say like hey your lazy builder needs to be like your callbacks don't do static class dot the method like just use the the array format for class comma method so type, so if we go to item, 
value op concat right is in the left name. So wait, why didn't this result? Um, type is intersection type. Like I feel like there should be resolvable in here. Um, item value if it's concat. So in this case, we need to say node instance of PHP parser node expression binary op. Let's debug at this point. All right, so we got the node. We're at the concat. So let's step into this. Let's step into the resolve type. Exit, binary up smaller, smaller equal, greater is set boolean not bit wise not bit read and um, identical not identical instance of concat here we go um if node instance of assign op else we got our left and right so the left is the class constant fetch and the right is a string now why can't we Left string type to string. Oh, because it, it gets the type and then converts it to the string type and ditches the entire value. Um, or not, never mind. It only does that. Um, so left string type value. So we have the value here. Why does it cause us to remove this value. So left string type, constant string type and value is equal to null. That is not it. That is not it. If left string type is instance of constant string type and so is the right, it takes the left string type and appends the right string type. Then why are the values lost? What happened here? Op concat type. Where, how did, oh no. So node attributes start line is 17. Okay, so we're here. So we're breaking something. matches and one okay so that one's not the problem let's look here right left name static so is it here that things get messy so type intersection type okay so static class that's where um it gets screwed up so the static class cannot be determined inside of this concatenation, but is it supported elsewhere? Did not try that yet. So let's do
pre-render value of three point zero one two three. Yeah. Um, is a non-empty string and the callback cannot be determined. I feel like this could only happen when using static class and concatenation. Um, right? This is usually called by concatenating, I cannot spell, concatenating on static class with a method change to an, to an array callback format instead. I just wish it didn't cause the value to be tossed. So let's see if I can still try to fix, try, I want to try to give a good error back is what I want. Because otherwise people are just going to create issues for me that I'm going to have to solve. So concat left name parts self static Okay, so that's when we get the intersection type. I just want to make sure. Cat left. Self. Class constant fetch. All right, let's step in. Let's resolve the type. Then we got to go down. Bitwise not, boolean and, boolean type, boolean or, identical, I don't remember now, let's just step through. Is set, boolean not, bitwise, boolean and, boolean or, logical, identical, not identical. Instance of, okay, it's going to cat. So left string type. Generic class string. Okay, so we get a generic tr class string of a type. So, like, why does it blow this away? Um, and right, so this seems okay. Accessory types. Why does it destroy? Um, all right, so what we'll have to do is fix this so if intersection type is of inter intersection and type is not empty string so um, what do we pass here item val value that's our node that we pass in When someone does static class foo bar, we end up with an intersection type and have lost the left right values inside from the scope. I'm curious why it does that. 
I have a feeling it's probably because static class can't necessarily be trusted. Um, but Drupal has it everywhere. So I'm going to um, try to support it here. And someone does static class, foo bar. So we replicate the work here. Stop and debug so I can get back into here and write this code. And I almost wonder, I should move that into here actually. So let's stop before I get too far. Um, let's go back to here. So we have if is constant string type else if is intersection type and is non-empty string, we can try to do um, the fanciness here. So what we can say is if it's intersection type, and node instance of, Is it a binary or is it a sign op? That's a good question. So let's just rerun the test and see. Not run, but debug. Oh, we still didn't get to the fact that lazy builders aren't analyzed correctly. So that'll be fun. And hopefully I can get to that. So it's, so it's a binary op. What are the binary ops? So, cat, get operators the period, where a sign up would be what? What would that be like? That's probably the period equals, I'm guessing. So we wanna say, um, if it's an intersection type and it's not empty and node, is an instance of and cat and I have part of this we have so for here we have left and right Oh, it would be uh, scope. Yep. So let's restart it. So left string type, type, static type, base class. So generic, generic class string type and write is constant string. So we can say to, yes, let's put it right in the here. Um, we can say if left string type instance, instance of generic class string type and write string type instance of constant string type. Type static base class. So that's the base class. Class reflection, generic. Let's look at the methods here. Um, get reference classes. So we'd have to get generic type. Uh, 
which would be static object, which would be object type. This is a mess. Generic type equals this one. Yeah, PHP stands treating of statics as a headache, but also using static is a headache as well. So there's that too. Um, the problem is it's not even how it treats static here. It's how it treats static when concatenated. It's This is fine. When using static class pre-render callback, it is fine. But when it's concatenated, this is when it gets weird. Um, I do see if upstream PHP stand is open to fixing this. And that's in the mutating scope. Yeah, that they behave different is confusing, and I bet that it is um, just a bug, right? Like instance of. So let's do its um, so the accessory types. So right here, it checks constant string type, constant string type, but doesn't check if anything is a generic class type so um his generic class string type class string type extends string type not a constant string type um generic type is static yeah it's in here, so let me just um, logic checks on oh. um. I'm trying to think real quick because we we have get reference classes which generic string type get reference classes it's type and it can go it's static type Get static object type, class reflection if it's a generic. So I think that's one problem too, is with stat like PHP stand supports generics and that's where statics get weird. Um, so static type, object type, this class get reflection name, subtract to type, this class get reflection. Cause it can handle all of the generics that might be related to the static. Um, which makes me feel like I need to create a um, union, not union, I don't know, something that could handle all the reference classes. Reference class is an array. All this to fix. You know what? No, I'm not doing this. Um, before I post this comment, am I right that if you just change, if you change this in interface, commit code checks, partial scanning, it wouldn't catch the problem with implementing classes or code use? Yes, you're correct. With what they want to do with commit dev check is you could change an interface and it won't scan the whole entire code, code base for um, side effects because you didn't modify the baseline. 
that is completely correct and relies on people to run PHP stain in full on their local machine, which no one will do. Um, so there's that. All right, I'm going to um, I'm not going to fix this. I'm going to force people to use different callbacks. Um, yeah, and it makes it impossible for others to use it on Drupal CI. That's exactly it. Um, so let's see, get node type. So we need to do else if. Um, type instance of intersection type and type is not empty string errors equal rule error, error builder message let's copy this again Generally, this generally this is caused by concatenating static class with a name string. Use an array callback instead. I guess I do need to put, um, oh, this just is annoying. Maybe I can give the error back on how they should refactor it. Or maybe I'm being too nice and people just need to not do this. Um, here. If node or item value, right? It's item value up here. Um, instance of up uh, and cat right so pip what does it do Build, reach rule error, there's properties. Error message. What? Class name. What? Why is there? Tip rule error. Get tip. That's all interfaces. Where is just rule error? There isn't because it's all been combined somehow. Oh. Message three, mine rule error. Oh my word. Skip up on that. Um, I don't. I don't like this one bit. Um, A 
let's scope scope um item item right um, so we can say if left instance of generic Let's do this. We're going to do tip equals try to provide a tip for this weird use case. For this weird occurrence. There we go. Again, do not type. Um, so let's say tip. Say if tip is equal to an empty string, um, tip equals think if you think this, if, if this is not supposed. If this error is un is unexpected, open an issue with open an issue with the error and sample code. Yeah, I think that's the best I can do there. Um, because we need to handle this intersection type. Type is not empty string. Intersection type, well, what could intersection type be? It could be reference classes, it could be everything. So let's make this be very obvious. It could be intersection type. So if it is a generic class string, tip refactor and catenation of oh. refactor connect concatenation of static class with methods to array all that let's run the test to see what kind of error we get in the test all right um so to callback of Let's make this a, a string f, although it doesn't need to be. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Um, no, we can say method equals write. Let's see. Let's type describe describe does string type string replace with quotes so let's debug it one more time I want to see if I can give them the actual code so that way, um, again, I'm just going to get issues opened. 
And it's gonna be my support time. So write string type, constant string type. So say it and write string type instance of. All right, so it should never be not a string type. So method name equals write string type get value. So if we run this, and what error is this? Okay, line 19. Oh, um, it's got the double quotes on it. So what we should do if, wait, uh, what did I do this right here? So the string count, let's do, all right, if, Just remove any instance of colons with an empty string. And this went from having no errors, right? To having one with a tip. This is on line, right? Should be line 19. That was a trip and a half. All right. Invalid, refactor, concatenation. Refactor. Concatenation of static class with method name to an array callback. I think that explains it as best as I can, and I tell them how to fix it. So that's step one, um, get diff. Let's clean up this unused statements. So get diff, get commit AV, handle, um, so yeah, I'm not gonna try to retype concatenation one more time. Static class with string as callback. Now I need to analyze lazy builders, which I realize is gonna break because they have a different um, they have a different structure. And I wonder if access callback does too. So what I should do is go into Drupal core lib. Um, if is set, do access callback with elements access callback, callback. Do you trusted callback with the args? What args? Where did? So the args are just the element. So that has the same value, but lazy builder is different. Um,
Yeah, so lazy builder is different because the first value of the array We can, I think we can do this. Um, no value, got the items. Lazy Builder has two items, callback and arcs. Others are direct callback. So let's get this tested. Rules, true in the callback rule. Let's do the lazy builder with constant and watch the mayhem fly as this probably breaks. Oh shoot, what did I break here? Oh, oh, so I added the tip for, oh wait, why would that, no, that doesn't need, pre-render value null at key zero is empty, that's not, no, that's not key zero. Um, so F, intersection type if this constant string type constant array type closure type um no i don't want to do that intersection type where is it null type i'm going to just no, then I'm adding everything into here. Constant scholar type, which is string. Um, interface constant type. I'm going to delete that. Because that's just too much. Um, all right, here we go. Let's fix Lazy Builder. I want to get this fixed before I sign off for today so I can take a new release. So keys to check. Key checked. Um, if not value instance of array, if zero, um, if key check is equal to lazy builder, stock is null. So let's drop this breakpoint. So my thought is that we can um, value items for each items. Oh, somehow fake the items. Um, maybe. Maybe. So run, this failed, debug it. So 
each value items. We have value items is five. Which, shoot, that makes sense. Let me back off here. Um, we need to do this. And here. Let's debug it. Because we need, we need to find out which item in we need to handle each item inside the array. Okay, so item is array item, value items. So, right, if I look at Lazy builder, so the item should have two items and we want to overwrite item to be item so if key checked is equal to lazy builder then Item value items. So we want to have lazy builder callback equals item value value. Or item value items. I guess we don't know what this is. Um, so if it's lazy builder, if item value is not instance of array, Errors, so error builder, and let's continue. Let's skip over it. Um, so the message is this will. don't have the type, which the type would be all right. So we do that, we get our array, error line. We can put that here. So let's debug it again. And eventually this should probably be refactored into like three different rules. One for render callback, one for access callback, one for lazy builder. But my goal right now is to fix this for Drupal core. Um, so lazy builder callback is an array. Items. Um, and this will be the first one. That's a class constant fetch. So what do we do here? If count is zero for each item, um, we can say if count is zero or is 
is not equal to two. No, we can't say equal to two. Yeah, it should be equal to two because it should be um, one, two. Maybe people call the back a key is not valid. First value must be a callback and second value its arguments. Um so actually let's do items here. And lazy builder callback becomes z the first item, which then we replace. So my thought is now that we have this callback, we can replace the item variable with this array item, I think. So lazy builder callback is array item items zero lazy builder. So I think replace item with our nested callback. Let's see if that does it. And then we'll have added proper support for lazy builders. Um, so item type is constant array type, value types, constant string type, lazy builder with constant and lazy builder. Awesome, that did do it. Um, and lazy and proper lazy builder callback. So let's run the test. And hopefully this passes. Nope. Um, maybe that's expected. What is it? Line 17. Yes. Wow. That's great. That worked better than I expected. Um, so let's copy this here, but it was line 17, I believe. Let's run the test. Lazy builder value four. So lazy builder and four. So value non empty string is invalid. Refactored concatenation of static class with method name to an array callback static class pre render callback. Oh, lazy builder. Cool. Um, Log handle concatenation, git commit a, git commit v, properly handle lazy builder callbacks, git push view origin pub 301, github pr, pr create. Fix lazy builder callback analysis and static class detonation. Fixes three oh one submit. And I should have done this in the beginning, but I forgot. Okay, no PHP, CS issues, PHP stand. Ow. Of course. Um, 
render callback rule 95. Cannot access property value on array item or null. Oh, um, wait. So let's do lazy fill their items. Oh wait, that's because array is array item or null. Um, If so, if count is not equal to two or item value items zero is null, that should fix that. V fix. No check on lazy builder. Now, a good question or a good use case would be actually let's go to Drupal org and our tests. Um, source rules pre render callback rule. <sighs> okay, wait for this to load. Come on. Um, is what I should do is now that Drupal core is a baseline, I can actually know what things to, um, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's get to the baseline. And I need to find out where this is actually triggering errors in Drupal core and run them in the unit tests. Um, so let's look at the baseline because now I know and define variable base, lazy builder callback. So let's actually run it on here. So right, we know that this should not be an error. Um, So it's fixtures, Drupal, core, lib, um, Drupal, core, access, route processor, CSRF. So that should no longer cause an error. Um, but it did line 52. Oh, because it's not an array, it's a string. Oh, all right. Um, 52. It processed twice. Um, oh man, oh man, oh man. Well, that means one of these places I don't have a proper continue. It's not callable. Key zero. Oh, wait a second. Lazy Builder only has one. That's right. Lazy Builder just has one item. 
Um, so it needs to be moved to its own. Oh, but it still has to handle the render callback. Um, right? Render CSR F. Um, so if the key checked is here, let's just, I'm going to debug this failure and see if I can try to make this work. Debug. It's lazy builder. We don't want for each items actually. Whoa, not there. Well, this woke up some old code breakpoints. So for each value items, we don't want the second, we only want the first one to process so let's stop this we need to um, function um, inspect Get errors for callback. I don't, um, do process node array. So here we go. Let's try this out. So we're going to have a process node and we're going to do do process node. And what we'll do here is we're going to move this logic into here. Oh boy. Um, So this is going to return well, error node. Well, um, all right. So we assume that's always going to be an array item node expression array item. item uh, string key checked and int position All right we know that's going to happen and where did i cut this from right here so we would do error equals this do process node um right item is item scope key checked and position if error not equal to null actually let's just do um Errors then array filter errors. So the idea is um, 
we can then have this be a return error. Return the error. Return. Trusted callback type needs to be moved into this method. This needs to be Return null. Return. Return in there. Okay, so that gives us all the returns, and that's just this should not break any like we should have still all the tests green except for the lazy lazy builder which is the case okay so now what we do is if p checked equals lazy builder um and I guess access callback is not an array either. Renderer, and if is set, it is the, is the first one. Else if p checked, access callback, else. Um, so actually, man, this whole thing needs to be rewritten. This is way too simplistic. Um, so we can change this. So P search, P checked value. So let's move this on up. Um, so Lazy Builder requires an array. So does post and pre-render. Um, let's delete those. And then this whole Lazy Builder business, I'm going to delete. And this for each is supposed to go here. If this is not an array, stop equals null. And not equal null. To do this should be three. Um, let's put a breakpoint here and there and run the test again to make sure I didn't break anything. Oh, I broke something. Lazy builder. Oh, never mind. The lazy builder. Yeah, I proved that lazy builder is not returning errors when it should. Um, but everything else is working okay. So let's debug, which means I wrote wrong lazy builders in my fixture. So let's um, just stop this really quick. Yeah, this is all wrong. Um, Let me just quick fix 
kind of fix this. So that's that one. I think that fixes the lazy this lazy builder callback because it should be an array with the callback and the arguments, which is exactly what happens here. So let's do a debug. Item, wait, where do we go? Value, array, items. So it should be um, account is equal to zero if value items zero no expects to have an array of expects to have a callable the Blah, blah, blah. The lazy builder expects a callable array with arguments. Let's stop this. And this should be that's a for each. This should be errors. this across this node value items zero go key checked um, zero view process node Then for access callback, it should just be a value. That position, that key zero, that needs to be work as well, but let's just run this and see. Twenty-five. Um, so that does make sense then, right? Line twenty-five. Twenty-five about concatenation. Yes. So we'll take twenty-five and key zero. That passed. What? Uh, so now what I need to do is show and find out where. Okay, great. So that's all passing. 
I have a feeling PHP Stan is going to get angry at this part with item zero. Yeah, it's 75. Wait, item, wait, item null, if equal to null. I'm just going to, because it shouldn't be null. Um, all right, access callback expects an test, test, test. There's only five instances. That's weird. Um, so I guess we'll try that out. Oh, wait, 77. Line 77, array item, node expression given. I'll have to debug that by going and running the render callback. So where's the, so test Drupal. File, let's run the test. Something's gonna probably explode. Unwind error. Okay, great. That's what's to be expected. Um or not. Um composer require dev. Now, so Drupal 9 requires PHP spec bridge for prophecy, whatever, and it crashes the test because of the exception that Drupal throws. Um, and I remove it because I still need to test Drupal 8, so I can't commit that to my lock file again. One array item array given. So um, let's look at that. Access callback. Value this specs an array item. That's not ah. um. What I think it needs, maybe what I need to do is item, it's not equal to array item. Error line. So what do we expect value to be? Expression? Node? Do we, what's that gonna break? Because what we can do is this should be item, value, item is zero. Node, and this should be known I think that makes that okay, but ah wait. Um if item value node is instance of the concat, we can do node left, right. 
So that does item value, value, and every item. Value items is an array. So value if not instance of array right, item. Let's see what PHP stand says before I even run it. No errors. Okay. Let's run the test. not implement lazy builder is not trusted render callback trust okay so that is the I think that's the expected error maybe um, we do Unified viewer and split to the side of so 45. Oh yeah, all these are expected to air out. It's not trusted. So 45 must be of that. 49. Access callback. Class, this does not implement trusted callback interface. Plan 61. Invocable. Okay, so that's that's a bug right there. It's invocable. Golly. Um not trusted. So 61. Uh, at key is invalid x value is invalid so let's go value at key is invalid type Null. Let's debug this. Oh, this quickly escalated into a cascading mountain of insanity. Um, now let's type this type. Um, Closure type. I'm going to add this up here. Else, if type instance of this type, um, type is I guess you just say like the type is callable for the this hold on this type so it's as a static type is callable. Oh jeez. Let's try debugging this. Let's 
static type, get static type object. It is callable. Parameters acceptors. Yes. All right, excuse me. So that seems to be working now. Um, these do need to be split up to three different rules because they do very different things, but they share a lot of, um, well, they just share this code really for getting the type. And this could be moved to a helper probably. Um, Although all of this is needed too still, except for the position. Um, the position isn't exactly needed, but that can be improved. So I'm gonna just rerun that whole test suite again. And look at what we changed. So we're in the callback rule, this type, delete I guess I should add it um, because it is expected because it's the test no I'm just gonna remove it I used it for debugging and that's good enough because the only thing that has access callback tests are the render callback tests um, and that's it so fix inspection or access callback and get this type submit but anyway redo php stand Did I push? Push. All right. Um, let's review this. Man, that was a lot and I have to go through. Um, next is callback lazy builder. So yeah, so if it's a lazy builder and not array, get the first item, that's the callback. Let's note, I'm gonna annotate some of the code a little bit too. Um, So to do, move into its own rule. To do, so to do, take value items one and validate parameters against, against the callback. To do moved into its own rule. To do keep here. All right. Um, let's see. To do move to a helper as Drupal uses service method. References a lot. Um, yep. All right, I think that's as cleaned up as I'm going to make it right now. Get diff, diff commit D, add notes. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want to do AV. Get the checkout composer.json. Get diff. Get AV. Add notes. Get 
and then let's write better commit messages, add notes for next steps and render callback rule. Push it. No. Um, all right, I'm gonna look at this feedback. And the next step, what did, what did Alex Potts say? Or he didn't reply. Um, drop the idea of plugins for things like that in Drupal CI, it makes sense because the GitLab CI will do it. Um, there's nothing to stop Contrib from having their own Drupal CI.yaml and running PHP send via container image. It will be easier when PHP stands part of core dev, which is true. Um, so yay. Only look at core neon files, ignore changes to include neons. Yeah. Um, I have run the script on my local machine. I am going to echo that the following scares me there's there is no point to running php stan if we don't analyze the entire code base based on the changes this what this does do is trust that a contributor ran php stand locally to see if the baseline was modified uh, so that portion needs to be documented how to regenerate the baseline if it's not, if it is not, or if it is, I missed that. Apologies. Um, otherwise, it can run without any consequence consequence and we may not even know if the baseline was fixed cleaned up at all all right i'm going to merge this and hope that this fixes a lot of things. I'm going to release this. Perhaps a new release. Eight. Under callback rule improvements, the render callback rule added in. When did I add that? Um, back to chat. Yeah, I'm pretty worried. Anytime we update PHP send at Neon or PHP send Drupal, it's going to be a mega issue because the baseline is out of sync. Yeah, like updating PHP send Drupal won't fix the baseline necessarily. Um, Yeah, I'm severely concerned about it. Had various flaws. This this release should fix that. Improper analysis of access callback. 
not an array, single callable. Improper analysis of lazy builder, an array, but of call user func array facts. Callable args. Um, controller method style callbacks were not parsed. Now they are. Service name method. Okay, that's released. Yeah, concerned and excited. I'm just afraid it's going to bite us. Like, we're going to release this, and all of a sudden it's going to be like, oh, well, PHP stands a pain to maintain and manage. Um, I don't want that to happen. I'd rather we waste the few CPU cycles and have easier management. Um, so let's see. Uh, let me comment down here. I just tagged, but it won't fix your issue at your... It won't, it will still flag your current issue, but if you change it from static class, lazy build CTA to static class, lazy build CTA, it will report There, report fine. Comment. All right. Well, um, thanks for hanging out. I did this an extra hour than I normally do, but that's because I really wanted to fix this so that way we could, um, you know, have good reporting in Drupal Core, and also it was wrong. Um. Yeah. Okay, I'm fried out, but thanks for hanging out and don't walk helping me walk through this ridiculous issue. So have a good one. Bye.